Greetings, Faith Ministries Zimbabwe. My name is Pastor Kumbakani Piri, and I'm bringing you today's Easter message all the way from Malawi. What a privilege and an honor to be a part of this special event. I know it's a virtual event. And so, yes, greetings to the church in Zimbabwe and to the church around the world, different individuals that are logging in to celebrate this Easter with you. And so Easter, of course, is a special time, isn't it? Uh, in the church calendar, uh, as we've known it over the years, um, we use this time to retell the gospel story. Just like we use Christmas to retell the gospel story. We also use this time to retell the gospel story. And, and we focus on really the death and resurrection of Jesus. You cannot fully appreciate Christ's death and resurrection if you don't actually understand his life. And so Jesus Christ lived for 30 years. We're not too sure about what happened in those 30 years. Many theologians call it the silent years of Jesus. And then for the next three years, he disciples these 12 men. And at the end of that discipleship, he invites these men to walk a dark journey as he goes towards the cross. And many of them scatter and, they, and, they, and, they, and they, they're confused because their leader, their Messiah, is about to be murdered and killed. And we know that as he hung on that cross, it was at that ultimate moment that he taught the greatest discipleship lesson of all, and which is Christ calls us that we would die and follow him. And as Christ dies on the cross, the disciples are totally bewildered and, and they, they don't understand what's going on. But we know that he died on a Friday, but on Sunday he rose again. And it's after the resurrection of Jesus that the disciples are restored. The disciples are restored and they begin to understand the full mandate and ministry of Jesus. So we're back to another Easter to retell this amazing story. Now, as I am looking at this amazing story again this year, I began to realize, and you probably have done that as well, that you cannot understand the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus if you don't understand the life of Moses. Now, isn't that interesting? A couple of, Jesus Christ was born in 4 BC, and uh, he lived only for 33 years and died. If you go back over a couple of, more than a thousand years or so, there was another man who lived on this earth and his name was Moses. And as you look at the life and ministry of Moses, you begin to realize that actually to fully unpack the life of Jesus, you have to mirror it with the life, not just the life of Moses, but his ministry and how Moses' ministry spanned beyond his lifetime. And so, we're in the Gospels looking at the life of Jesus, but we're also in the Old Testament looking at the life of Moses. So let's look at these two men. Now, Jesus Christ at the age of 30 is baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And the first thing that Jesus does is he looks for men and women that he will call. And of course, in that context, Jesus Christ identifies 12 men. And the first thing he says to them is, I'm calling you, follow me, he says. And and he's basically saying, I'm calling you out of one way of life and I'm calling you into another way of life. Well, Moses, at the age of 80, at the burning bush, God calls him. And what does Moses do? Moses doesn't go to 12 men. He goes to a whole nation. And Moses says the same thing and he says, follow me. Just as Jesus said, follow me. And Moses says to the Jewish people, I'm calling you out of Egypt and I'm calling you into the promised land. And, 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 and right there, with a couple of a thousand years spanning between the life and ministry of these two men, there is a prophetic light that God calls men out of one way of life and he calls us into another way of life. For Moses, the message was to the Jewish people, are you willing to leave Egypt? Egypt represents my comfort zone and your comfort zone. Egypt represents a non-Christian living the sinful life. But Egypt also represents the born again Christian in one season of life. And God is saying it's time to move into the next season. And so Jesus calls these 12 men. He says to them, follow me. And he calls them out of Judaism as they would have known it at that time. And he calls them into the light of the gospel of the kingdom. And I believe this Easter, I really want to speak to you this, this, this day, that God is calling you out. Are you willing to leave the old and to enter into the new? The theme for 2021 is behold, I am doing 
a new thing. And is it possible that the very thing that God told you to do in the previous year, in the previous season, would be the very thing that could block you from going into the next level that God has for you? Do you know that it was God's will that the Jews go to Egypt? And for over 400 years, God used Egypt to shield them. But when the time came, when the time came, my friends, God calls Israel out of Egypt. Jesus Christ calls the disciples out of Judaism. And yet Judaism had been a place that God had prepared for the nation of Israel. But the time came for God to do this new thing. And I believe this Easter in 2021, God wants to call you out. He's calling you out of the old that you might enter into the new. And my friends, this calling requires that we lay down our lives. For the Jewish people, it literally was a, 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 a threat to their very lives. The, the power of the Egyptian army, the power of the pharaohs was going to glare down upon them. And Pharaoh would do everything in his power to make sure that the Jews remain in Egypt. How many of you know that if, if I'm living a life of sin, or if you're living a life of sin, Satan is going to do everything in his power to keep you in that place. But I have good news for you. God has sent the Messiah, Jesus. God sent Moses to set God's people free. Now, I love the metaphor of and, and the comparison of these two people because you cannot understand Easter if you don't understand the ministry of these two men. Jesus Christ came to primarily deliver mankind from the power of sin. Moses was sent to deliver the Jews from the power of oppressive and oppressive political system. And yet when you combine the ministry, when you combine the meaning of these two ministers spanned by hundreds and, and a few thousands of years between these two men, you will find a more holistic understanding of the true meaning of Easter. That indeed God is concerned about men and women that are living in poverty, under political oppression, under economic domination. God is concerned just as he was concerned of the Jewish people. But God is also concerned about you and I if we're living in spiritual poverty, if we're living in emotional bondage. God is calling us out. And so as I bring to you this Easter message, there is a calling out, my friends. And this calling out, what happens that whenever God calls people out, usually it, it, it requires a remnant. Now, the principle of remnant in the Bible is that usually God calls everyone, but only a few respond. And isn't it sad that many of us in 2021, we will refuse to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. In this year, God is saying to the church, I am calling you out. What is he calling us out of? Sin, the world systems, he's calling us out and any demonic oppression. If you look at the ministry of Jesus throughout his three years, he kept calling men and women out. I am calling you out. Now, the second special message that Easter brings, and we see this in the life and ministry of both Moses and Jesus, is a message of freedom. Freedom, my friends. For Moses, it really was freedom. Freedom from the oppressive jaws of Egypt. And it took the Jewish people to go through the Red Sea to truly be free. You see, as long as you leave Egypt, but you haven't crossed the Red Sea, then Pharaoh can follow you and he can recapture you and take you back into the land of Egypt. But once you've crossed the Red Sea, my friends, Pharaoh cannot cross the Red Sea. And so what does Jesus do? Well, Jesus calls his disciples into a relationship with the God of the universe. And once you've made that choice to follow Jesus, there is no turning back. But you have to be willing to call all the way. And so one of the uniqueness about this Easter message that I'm bringing to you is that God is looking for a remnant church that's willing to go all the way. Not willing to mix. Willing to go all the way. Those 12 men that followed Jesus, my friends, the challenge that they were going to face wasn't that we're whether they would follow Jesus as the healing Messiah, as the prophetic Messiah, but would they follow him all the way to the cross? And the reality is they didn't follow him all the way to the cross. They all denied Jesus. They scattered. 
But what's amazing about the ministry of Jesus, that Jesus had a, had a liberating ministry. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free, just as Moses came to set the Jewish people free. Are you a captive this Easter? Are you in bondage with sin, the world and the devil? Do you feel like you are in a prison of depression? Jesus, like Moses, wants to speak freedom of your life. I want to speak freedom to you today, wherever you are. Maybe you need political freedom. Maybe you need economic freedom. Maybe you need um, emotional freedom. Maybe you are in a relationship, a, a broken relationship, an abusive relationship. God wants to set you free from that relationship. May the Lord set you free today. That's what the gospel of Jesus does. And so for the nation of Israel, it truly really was in a momentous moment as the Red Sea parted and they were willing and they were able to go through. That's what Jesus did for you and I when he died on the cross. He died that we might be set free. And just as the Jews went through the Red Sea, you and I have to be willing to go through the waters of baptism as we accept Jesus, as we accept that he died for us on the cross, that we might be delivered. And so this Easter, I bring you a message of it's time to come out, come out from where you are and come into this new season that God has for us. Go all the way, my friends, because in this new season, there is a new freedom for God's people. Freedom to live a life out of these chains. Freedom to go into the fullness of God's destiny for my life. And folks, that is the fullness of the message of, of Easter. Well, the third thing I want to bring to you today as we think about Easter, as we think about celebrating this momentous occasion, the life, the ministry, the death, and then the resurrection of Jesus we find that at the core of Christ's message as he went onto the cross was a call to discipleship. And this is profound. You see, from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, when he called the disciples to follow him, he was indeed calling them to a life of being a disciple. But that message was only fully articulated, my friends, when he hung on that cross. Because when Christ calls us, he's not calling us to join an organization. He's not calling us to join some political or economic movement. He's calling us into his family. But in order for you to join that family, you have to be willing to die to yourself. And as Christ dies on that cross, he sends a clear message to his 12 disciples that my friends, the kingdom that I'm talking about, it's not of this world. And one of the major revelations that I want to pray for you during this Easter that we do live in this world but we're not of this world and we can only understand that reality when we go through the cross of Jesus now is Jesus concerned about your life on this earth of course he is and that's why for the Jewish people what does God do God takes them into the desert for 40 years listen to the statement I'm, I'm about to share with you and I believe this statement is the Lord was revealing this statement to me. I believe it will challenge you. It took three years for Jesus to disciple 12 men. It took 40 years for Moses to disciple a nation. And so this, the third principle is really what I'm calling discipleship in the desert or discipleship on the cross. <laughs> the greatest place for you to understand discipleship, what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to be a Christian. It's not during the revival. It's not when you get a provision of finances. It's not when you're healed in your body because God can do that. It's when you're on a cross, when, when, when you have to obey God even when it hurts. Are you willing to go all the way to become a follower of Jesus? Well, for the Jews, it was 40 years in a desert with Moses. What did Moses do? Well, Moses taught them the book of Genesis. He taught them the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, the book of Numbers, the book of Jeronomy. What we know is the Torah today. That's what Moses taught the nation for 40 years. Wandering in the desert, being taught the word of God. And I believe this Easter, one of the greatest messages I want to bring out to you is that my friends, God is looking for quality in the church. He just doesn't want quantity. See, my friends, our leadership capacity will determine our fruitfulness. And God wants fruit. He just, just, he just doesn't want numbers. And that's why Easter is special. Because at Easter, my friends, there is no easy path to victory. You have to be willing to go through the cross. What does the cross mean for a 21st century Christian? Well, it means 
that I have to be willing to say no to the girls, the gold and the glory or the guys, the gold and the glory. Now, is it wrong to be in a relationship? Is it wrong, you know, for us to want to desire to have the girls, the gold and the glory? Those three things. Yeah? And I had a fourth one, the good life. Those things aren't wrong at all. God made us to enjoy the girls, the gold and the glory. God made you to enjoy the guys, the gold and the glory. But it is these things that will stop us from entering into the kingdom if we're not willing to put Jesus first. I have been a Christian for 31 years and I want to confess to you, it's not always easy to follow Jesus and ignore the girls, the gold and the glory. It's not easy for me to put God first. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I turn away from Jesus and I choose to follow sin. I choose to not obey God. But that's why Moses spent 40 years because Moses wasn't discipling 12 men. He was discipling a nation. Jesus Christ says in Matthew 28, Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples of nations. So my friends, to understand what Jesus did in those three years, you have to link it with what Moses did in those 40 years. We're discipling men and women, but we're also discipling a nation and we cannot take shortcuts. Like Moses, are we willing to wander in the desert of life until we understand that God wants quality, my friends? You see, for a long time, the church has been busy filling buildings with people when God wants us to be busy filling people with God. And what does that mean? It means bringing every man and woman to the truth about the gospel. That when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Do you know that all of the apostles, the 11 that followed Jesus, we know Judas denied Jesus, but the 11 that, that followed Jesus post to, the, post to the cross with Matthias being added, all 12 of them, except John, so all 11 of them, except John, were martyred for their faith. Folks, they understood the message. They eventually got the message that Christianity is not about us living a comfortable life. It's about us living a, a Christ-like life. Now, will God bring comfort into our life? Yes. If you're a single person, will God send a, if you're a guy, will he send a girl into your life? Yes. If you're a girl, will he send guys in? Yes, God wants us to enjoy relationships. Uh, but, but for God, he wants to make sure he's first. So I cannot allow the girls. I cannot allow, if you're a girl, the guys. And I'm speaking to us whether we're married or not because we all know that many of us, it is these things that are stopping us. The sin that so easily entangles, it's stopping us from becoming all that God's called us to become. The girls, the gold and the glory and the good life. I always add that forth. The good life. These things can choke our faith if we don't understand the calling of a Christian. Unless a seed falls to the ground, it abides alone. And so for 40 years, the nation of Israel had to learn the principle of death. You see, my friends, you cannot be a Christian unless you say no to sin, the world and the devil. And the challenge for many of us, why we're failing to fully enter into the fullness of the new thing that God is doing, is that we are wandering in the desert of indecision and we're not willing to give Christ our all. I know he was savior at the Red Sea. He saved you. You are free from the bond of Egypt, but he wants to be Lord in the wilderness. He's savior at the Red Sea, but he wants to become Lord. He just doesn't want to save you. He wants to rule your life, but he saves you first. And then he says, I want to rule your life. And I believe this year, God is looking for you at, the, at, at your heart. And he wants to be seated on the throne. Many of us are carnal Christians, but are you a crucified Christian? You see, my friends, carnality is in the church. We think like the world. We, 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 we fight battles like the world. We have bitterness in our hearts. We, we have division in the church. And God is saying, I, I haven't, I'm not looking for a carnal church. I'm looking for a remnant church that truly understands the message of Easter, the life, ministry, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And so we see this third principle of discipleship. Wow, discipleship, my friends, is really life on life. It's when men and women choose to live their lives together. There's accountability. There is the transference, the transference of truth. Knowledge is imparted. Information is imparted. But life is lived out together. And that's why for Jesus, they, he lived together with these 12 men. They would see him wake up in the morning. 
they lived together. For Moses, for those 40 years with the nation, they did life together. And I believe in this next season, God is wanting the church to do life. We need to do life together, my friends. Not to do church together, not to do meetings together, not to do camps together, not to do programs together. We need to do life together. That is the heart of discipleship. It's doing life together. And so Jesus calls us out. He called the disciples out of one way of life and into a new way of life. Moses called the nation of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. Indeed, that was his vision. And then number two, Moses led them through freedom at the Red Sea. They were totally free only after they'd crossed the Red Sea. And for Jesus as well. It's only when we go through the waters of baptism and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we take on the mark of being a baptized believer. When we've said no to the world and we, we're looking straight to Jesus, we begin to walk in the freedom that Christ brings. And then number three, discipleship. The fourth thing I want to share with you this Easter is success and the fruitfulness of the kingdom. Well, for Jesus, in those three years, one of the things that Jesus did was he taught about true fruitfulness, the true meaning of success. Jesus Christ ministered to over 5,000 people, but he wasn't going to compromise his message to keep those 5,000 people. Jesus Christ raised the dead, but he would not allow such a great miracle to become the the center of his ministry and the identity of his ministry. Jesus Christ touched men that were blind and he opened their eyes. He, 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 he. Jesus Christ, if, if you were to measure his ministry, it was a successful ministry. But you see, Jesus Christ understood that true success is not, is not seen in, through our natural eyes, through us counting how many, how much money do you have? How much influence do you have? You know, uh, how big is your business? How, how successful is your business? It is seen by our fruitfulness in doing that which the Father has called us to do. What does Jesus say as the epitome of the success of his ministry? He says it is finished. Well, for Moses, Moses' success was discipling the next generation. What does Moses do? Well, he wanders 40 years with his generation. And one of the things that Moses does, Moses actually fails to take the Jews into the promised land. Isn't that interesting? But Moses disciples Joshua. How many of you know that it is through Joshua that Moses enters the promised land? Actually, Joshua becomes the leader that actually leads the nation to, to experiencing the fullness of the success that God had intended for the Jews when he delivered them from the Jews of Egypt. See, it's one thing, my friends, for you to come out, but have you fully entered in? Many of us are stuck in the wilderness. The challenge of the 21st century church is that we are stuck in the wilderness going back and forth in circles. Huh? And we're not fully comprehending and apprehending all that God has for us. We never left Egypt so that we would die in the wilderness. And I want to speak to my generation. I want to speak to you. Many of us are going to die in the wilderness because we're not willing to receive the new thing that God is doing. God is doing a new thing, my friends. And only those who will listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church will enter into that, that new thing. Woe to you if you think you can keep recycling the manna, my friends, every day. You've got to hear fresh from the Lord. And I want to pray that in 2021, in this month, in this April, in this year, that I would hear from the Lord again. That I would receive the new thing. You see, true success, my friends, is when we enter into the promised land when we enter into the fullness of the destiny that God has for us. Many of us started well, but we're not finishing well. I want to finish well, my brothers. True success is passing on the baton to the next generation. You might be ministering to 200 people. You might be influencing 5,000 people because you, you're the CEO of a big organization. But my friends, who are you passing on the baton to? True success is not when you succeed. True success is when you're gone and those that are after you can still continue the legacy of what you have. And that's why the ministry of Moses is unbelievable because Moses, when he died, he left the nation, the, the Torah. And that was the success of Moses. It wasn't just in discipling Joshua, who was his successor, but it was in living the legacy of the scriptures. He wrote down the truth. He chronicled the worldview, the belief system, 
that would make Israel great. And I truly believe this Easter, as we look at the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus continues today. And what's amazing that even though Jesus himself didn't write, but his disciples wrote. And isn't that powerful? The disciples of Jesus chronicled the life, the ministry, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And after that, we see the rest of the New Testament coming together. Because my friends, true success has a multi-generational element to it. You're not successful if all you do is impact your generation. You're only successful if you can impact future generations. So Easter reminds us again about the fact that Jesus Christ was willing to lose at the cross, that we might win at Pentecost. Hallelujah. He lost at the cross that you and I might win at Pentecost. And that's why when Jesus Christ ascended to heaven on his way to heaven, he met the twelve. And he instructed them to go to Jerusalem to wait. Yeah? To wait for what? For Pentecost. For the passing on of the baton. For the full legacy of his ministry. Three years of ministry. But now we see over 2,000 years of more ministry. Because Jesus passed on the baton. And so my friends, this Easter, this is the message I'm bringing to you. That God desires to take us out. That he must bring us in. God desires that we might walk in the full freedom, the full freedom that we get from Christ. We can be free emotionally. We can be free psychologically. We can be free from the power of sin, the world and the devil. But number three, he calls us into a life of discipleship, life upon life, walking together in the desert of life until we get to the place where God has prepared for us. You know, in John 14, it says, I go ahead to prepare a place for you. But how many of you know that it's not just that God is preparing a place for you, But God is also preparing you for that place. And that's the harder work, my friends. The harder work isn't God preparing a place. The harder work is you being prepared for that place. And that requires your willingness to understand the message of the cross. That unless a man dies to self, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so true success is seen when we are willing to take up the cross and we're willing to follow Jesus even if it means at the cost of our lives. And for many of us, the calling is not to die for Jesus, but the calling is to live for Jesus. And that's harder sometimes than claiming I'm willing to die for him. Will you live for him? Will you give your all for him? And so at the cross of Jesus, we see the true success doesn't always look or come in the package the way we understand it because it comes in the the form of obedience. (laughs) And so are you willing to be obedient? I love the book of Hebrews. It talks about others conquering kingdoms and then it talks about others being sown in two, being cut, laying down their lives and both were men and women of faith. And so number one, we're called out in order to be called in. Number two, freedom. Number four, discipleship. Number f- number three, discipleship. Number four, the true meaning of success. And then number five, consolidation and dominion. And so what does Jesus do? He, he rises from the dead on the third day. But before he ascends to heaven, there's a brief period of 40 days of consolidation. He begins to share with the disciples as the resurrected Christ. Not the ascended Christ, he hasn't ascended yet. But in his his resurrected form, he begins to reteach the gospel. And and, and now they, see, because initially, when Christ spoke about the kingdom of God, they thought of an earthly kingdom. But now as he begins to speak to them, he says, ah, now he's in his resurrected form. They begin to understand that this thing is bigger than just bringing political and economic transformation. And Jesus will do that in many instances. He can come and change a nation politically. But it's more than that, my friends. And and I believe in the year 2021, at this Easter conference, I want you to consolidate your faith. Go beyond the physical blessing. Go beyond God meeting your financial needs. God blessing your marriage. God meeting your economic needs. And go all the way to understanding that this is about a partnership with the God of the universe. God is inviting you and I to partner with him. And that's what Christ does for 40 days. All the way to Pentecost. And then he ascends to heaven. And so as the disciples are now being filled with the Holy Ghost, they don't have just the understanding of what they'd had in the past three years, but they have a a renewed understanding. And so my friends, there is consolidation in those 40 days after uh, before Pentecost, after his resurrection. And what then happens is that Christ then, after consolidation, he ascends into heaven. And guess what? At Pentecost, dominion is released. The dominion of the kingdom. And that's what Jesus wants to do for you today. This Easter, understand that Christ is calling you out 
that he might call you in. Number two, there is freedom for you this Easter. That's number two. Number three, he's calling into a life of discipleship. Number four, he wants to teach you the true meaning of success. Number five, consolidate your faith. And then number six, there's dominion in the kingdom. May God bless you as you participate in the Faith Ministries Easter Conference in 2021. I believe as you study the life of Jesus and you shadow it with the life and ministry of Moses, you'll understand the fullness of this message is not just to convert a soul, but it's to transform a nation. I want to close. It took three years to disciple 12 men. It took 40 years to disciple a nation. What has God called you to do? Are you discipling men and women? Are you discipling a nation? May the Lord bless you this year because the Lord is doing a new thing. God bless you. Thank you.